Today is day 319 of the October 7th war and the Hamas hostage crisis. Hamas's savage murder of six hostages shows Israel must get all the hostages out today and must ensure Hamas cannot take more hostages tomorrow. Hamas is starving and torturing and raping and executing innocent hostages in its terror dungeons. And Hamas is blowing up negotiations. Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken confirmed Israel said yes to the mediator's proposal for a ceasefire and hostage release deal. Hamas is saying no. Hamas started this war. Hamas does not want to end it. Overnight, Israel recovered bodies of six hostages in Khan Yunus. They were abducted alive. Hamas filmed some of them alive for propaganda videos. Hamas exploited them for its cruel psychological warfare against their poor families. Now we know Hamas murdered the hostages like so many innocents it massacred on October 7th. Israel needs a deal for all the hostages, so there is no one left behind. Israel is breaking Hamas on the battlefield. Even CNN admits Israel has reduced a once professional fighting force into a guerrilla group. But Hamas wants the world to save it from the war it started. Hamas wants Israel to withdraw without giving back all the hostages so it can hold on to the hostages for insurance while planning more October 7th because Hamas is, wage is waging a forever war against the Jews. Hamas does not want a permanent ceasefire because that would mean peace. Hamas wants a deal that lets it do October 7th again and again and again, as it promised. Hamas is fighting for again and again, but Israel is fighting for never again. Israel does not just want to secure any deal. Israel wants to secure a deal that secures the hostages and that secures people in Israel from another October 7th. Hamas lies. Hamas claims it didn't take civilians hostage, but Hamas executed, ho executed hostages old enough to be their grandfather and took hostages young enough to be their babies. Three of the murdered hostages were kidnapped from kibbutz near Oz. Hamas murdered or abducted one quarter of the village. You know, there's a word for wiping out a village, genocide. That's what Hamas wants to try again and again. Hamas also kidnapped baby Kfir Bibas from the village. Kfir Bibas has spent more of his short life as a Hamas hostage than he was ever free. Hamas is holding elderly men, women, and a one-year-old Hamas demands to keep hostages and to be allowed to prepare for another attack so it can kidnap and murder more elderly men, women, and one-year-olds. Hamas is evil. The whole world needs to understand. Hamas is the reason war continues. Hamas began the war. Hamas doesn't want to end the war. Israel wants peace, but there is no peace with Hamas still in power. Hamas exists for the sake of war. For the sake of peace, Hamas must go. <sighs> Some people love Hamas's evil. They're loud and proud outside the US Democratic Party National Convention in Chicago. Hamas fans are marching for murder. Hamas fans are marching for rape. Hamas fans are marching for child abuse, for kidnapping babies. Somehow, it became super progressive to march for rapists just because they rape Israelis. Just look. The upside-down red triangle is how Hamas marks out its target. When those pop up in America, that's not criticism of Israel. That's a death threat against all Americans. They're chanting, we don't want two states, we want 48. Calls to destroy Israel means wipe out the Jews. Murder, rape, genocide. Those are the points that the people outside the DNC march for. The same people glorifying Hamas are burning American flags. The Islamic Republic of Iran's leader called some of these people a branch of the resistant fr resistance front. U.S. intelligence revealed Iran funds some of these protests. The U.S. arrested Iranian agents behind them. Iran hacked a presidential campaign and is trying to assassinate American political leaders. 
Evil isn't suddenly progressive because the target is America. And evil isn't suddenly progressive because the targets are Jewish people. You might have heard the UN calling for a humanitarian ceasefire to vaccinate the people of Gaza against polio. So here are the facts. Nearly everyone in Gaza is already vaccinated against polio, 95%. The World Health Organization just said the vaccination rate before Hamas started this war on October 7th was optimal. And now Israel is working with WHO and UNICEF to get 1.3 million more vaccines into Gaza to protect 600,000 Gazan children from polio. This is a precaution. No one in, in no one is infected with polio in Gaza. The WHO's months of checks show zero infections. Israel's health ministry flagged a new mutation and is doing what it can to keep Gazans safe from polio. Israel has been working hard to get medicines into Gaza to the Gazan people, but Hamas hijacks medical supplies and denies medicine to innocent hostages. Hamas wages war outside of is from outside from inside of Gaza's hospitals and from inside humanitarian safe zones. Israel helped bring in 11 field hospitals to treat Gazans because it doesn't want civilians to pay the price for the war Hamas started and is fighting from behind them. Israel values all lives, people in Israel and Gaza. Hamas values all deaths, deaths in Israel and deaths in Gaza. As then Hamas head Ismail Haniya said weeks after the October 7th massacre, we need, the, we need the blood of the women, children, and elderly. Let's take some questions from our audience watching live on social media. Our first question today comes from Ed Barr on YouTube, who asks, how are the hostage families holding up? The news of Munda's death and the liberation of five dead hostages must be a horrifying, bittersweet moment. The hostage families are incredibly resilient. I know that I personally could not imagine going through what they are going through. I'm sure that every single day for them is hell and they're continuing to protest, to ask for an end for this war, to ask for Israel to continue pressuring Hamas to accept the ceasefire negotiations, and Israel is continuing doing everything they can to release the hostages and bring them back to their families. Our next question today comes from Daniel on X, who asks, why is Hezbollah continuing to fire into Israel? Didn't they promise to stop? That is a great question. Hezbollah promised to stop, and when I say promise, I put that in air quotes, because Hezbollah's promises don't mean anything. Hezbollah promised to stop if there was a ceasefire with Hamas. It's Hamas that is saying no to the ceasefire. So it's really Hamas's fault that Hezbollah is still firing rockets into Israel. Just today, just today, Hamas fired 75 more rockets into Israel. That comes a few days after Hamas fired 55 rockets into Israel. And we are just repeating ourselves to the point that it's almost getting boring, or it would if it weren't rockets flying into Israel, lighting Israel on fire, and keeping 60,000 people away from their homes now for 10 months. He Hezbollah has launched over 7,500 rockets at Israel since the war started, and they are going to continue firing rockets until they are forced to stop, because they are a terror army and they do not listen to reason or to nice negotiations. Our next question comes from Marjorie on Instagram, who asks, why is Israel responsible for helping anyone in Gaza anymore? That's definitely a good question. I think Israel is responsible only in the sense that Israel values life and cannot stand on the sidelines while people are at risk more than they have to. It is absolutely unquestionably Hamas's responsibility as the government of Gaza to vaccinate their people, to prevent them from, civili from civilians from being harmed in the war, et cetera, et cetera. But Hamas doesn't, not, not only do they not care, they actively want their civilians to die in order to make Israel look bad. So Israel doing what it has to do, as it always has and always will, which is take matters into their own hands and do their best to distribute vaccines to the people of Gaza and make sure that they are safe from polio, which as I said earlier, they already are. There's a new mutation and Israel is on it. 
and Israel cares about the people of Gaza more than Hamas does. Our next question comes from Lao Di Da on Instagram, who asks, what is the situation with the remaining hostages? Do we have any proof of life? Well, I wish I had a good answer for you. Because Hamas is a disgusting death cult that releases psychological warfare at any given moment, we do not know what the status of the remaining hostages are. We don't have any evidence to show that there are more murdered hostages at the moment, and I really hope that it stays that way. We also don't have any information about their health um, because Hamas has not allowed the Red Cross to visit the hostages. So at the moment, I don't have a good answer for you. Lum Legend 001 on YouTube asks, just to be clear, I support Israel, but how will this conflict ever end unless there are two states living side by side? In order for there to be two states, one of those states has to not be run by a terrorist army. That's the only answer I can give. In order for there to be peace, Hamas needs to go. There need to be new elections, and there needs to be a government of Gaza that is not interested in wiping Israel off the map. There could have been two states many times during the history of the last 76 years. It has been Hamas and the Palestinian leadership that has said no every single time. So many people in Israel and around the world do want two states. Many people in Israel and around the world don't want two states and want to continue living in Israel under one government. Whether you, not, whether you want one thing or the other, the reality on the ground is that in order for any peace prospect to move forward, Hamas has to go. Our next question comes from Vegan Loris on Instagram, who asks, please can we know how we can get our truth out to Western media sources, which only seem to report anti-Israel propaganda? Yes, that's a great question. And I am getting more frustrated every single day when I see news on my newsfeed that is specifically intentionally biased in favor of the Palestinian side and against Israel. I say my personal guidelines are spend five minutes a day commenting on social media posts from the Washington Post and the New York Times and just fact check their basic lies. I don't, I don't think that it's worth responding to the people who are anti-Israel in the comments, but just go in and leave a comment saying, maybe you forgot to mention X, Y, Z and give a heart on those messages, on the comments from people who are writing supportive is messages of, in support of Israel so that we can amplify our unifying voice and show the world that not just because that they are the loudest voice doesn't mean that they are the correct voice. I would also say that there needs to be a campaign that's starting soon to email the New York Times, the Washington Post, the CNN, every major news outlet that is, pro that is propagating actual lies or leaving out incredibly important context. Just the information about all of Gaza already, 95% of Gaza already being vaccinated against polio, that was not in any of the news stories. I didn't know that until today. And it is intentional because the people who are running these news organizations have, it's, I can't even think of a word bigger than biases. They, are, they have an agenda to make Israel look bad and to make Gazans look like the perpetual victim. So I would say that there needs to start being an email campaign calling out the direct writers of these articles, the direct broadcasters that are spreading misinformation every time. Tweet at them. Tweet at the organizations that are giving them a voice. Send them emails. Be active. And again, and of course, post on your own social media and spread the, your, spread the truth as far and wide as you can on a daily basis. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please join us again tomorrow at 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And until then, stay safe.